Welcome everyone and thanks for joining today's webcast about variant management for requirements and test cases in JAMA. My name is Robert Hellebrand. I'm your moderator of the, for today and uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you to our presenter, Yang Li. Yang Li is a field application engineer at Pure Systems. He is sharing his knowledge about product line engineering and pure variants in tutorials trainings and webcasts and helps customers on their journey towards a systematic variant management approach. Before joining Pure Systems, he earned his PhD on the topic of extracting variability information from engineering assets with AI. You can find all of our upcoming webcasts on our website. The link uh, is displayed here. Um, all webcasts are recorded and uploaded to the Pure Systems YouTube channel after the sessions. So if you have a question during the session, you can post it uh, at any time in the chat system. Only our webcast team will be able to see your questions and we will collect them and answer them in a Q&A session at the end of this webcast. Should there be too many questions and some are left unopened, we will contact you uh, unanswered, we will contact you after the webcast to follow up. With that, I will now hand over to Jan. Okay, thank you, Robert. Uh, welcome everyone from my side. So uh, I will start with a conceptual overview on how product line engineering with pure variance is realized. Product line engineering crosses different uh, engineering disciplines. So you can see pure variance, the tool we provide, also has been implemented across different two categories. For example, requirements, model-based system engineering, testing, and so on. Pure Variance comes with more than 30 integrations to other engineering tools, including an integration to JAMA that enable you to follow a holistic variant management approach. Of course, it depends on what a third-party tool offers and how open the API is so that we can easily integrate. In general, Pure Variance follows a product line engineering approach that contains two concepts in domain engineering. First, uh, we rely on a so-called 150% engineering assets. For requirements in JAMA, the idea is that in your whole product line, you have a superset of requirements in JAMA, which contains both common and uncommon parts. And the uncommon parts existing in a specific variant is controlled by a features in your feature model. That is the second concept that pure variance make use of here. So uh, in a feature model, you basically uh, hold, hold the information on an abstract level independent from the requirements, which can tell you what can vary among different product variants. For example, a functionality can be part of one specific variant, but not part of other variants. This functionality can be expressed as a feature in the feature model. And in the feature model, you also need to put information about interdependencies between features. So if you select one feature, is another feature required in combination to make this work? Or are there certain features conflicting each other? And you can just select one of them for a specific variant. So this information is also modeled here. Besides functionalities, that can be modeled as features. You can also have your markets uh, as features in a feature model to be able to express that you want to deliver certain variants to a certain market. So, and therefore, you might have to uh, follow different standards, which might have impact on your solution assets, including your requirements or test cases. And there may be other uh, marketing decisions that you want to only provide certain functionalities in certain uh, uh, markets. So this uh, would be also how you could uh, express features here. And these features are put into relations with your solution assets. So there will be a mapping rule placed on your 150% requirements to express certain part of it is only needed if a variant, uh, you know, variant, if a certain features are relevant to this variant. So uh, after you have this feature model and mapping information to your 150% uh, requirements, requirements base established in application engineering, 
you will be able to configure variants via a so-called variant model that basically shows the features you earlier uh, generated in your feature model. But in this uh, variant model, you can select the features that are relevant in the variant specific context. And all this information goes as input into a so-called transformation step where pure variants can generate 100% requirements uh, for each variance out of the 150% requirement base, which is based on the feature selection of the respective variants. Today, uh, we will show how this can be done for requirements and test cases in JAMA. But in the same way, we also implement this approach for other assets. For example, the same feature model uh, can be connected to your super set of codes uh, arch architecture models, functional safety assets, and so on. Let's first have a look at how to add restrictions to JAMA requirements. Here, requirements engineer would be the role who has the knowledge of what is needed under which condition, and thus is responsible for adding the restrictions to express a certain part of your requirements is only needed if certain features are active. In JAMA, we select all 150% JAMA projects of an automotive front car light product line as an example. Now let's navigate to this uh, requirements view. You can see the super set of requirements with the information about a PV restriction. And some of the requirements you can see have already a PV restriction on them. Uh, for adding such a PV restriction, we make use of a pure variance desktop hub that provides you an overview of the feature model you earlier generated, as well as a PVSL editor, assisting you to put such a PV restriction to a requirement. Now let's have a look at how we can uh, add a new PV restriction to a requirement. For example, uh, I want to uh, add a PV restriction to the requirement automatic uh, hazard warning to control the existence of this requirement by a feature. So how can I do this? I can uh, select this requirement and then uh, further uh, open this requirement, navigate to this uh, PV restriction and enable uh, editing mode. And then I click this uh, on this uh, PV restriction field and press Control plus Alt plus P to open this PVSCL editor. So uh, you can see I can also use this auto completion uh, functionality to uh, which uh, knows all the logical operators and also all the features you earlier defined in your feature model. If I start typing, you can see the list is filtering down. So I can directly select the feature uh, I want here. I just select the feature hazard warning and then save the changes. So uh, now you can say I have already added a simple PV restriction by using the feature hazard warning to this uh, requirement. It means that uh, if the feature hazard warning is active in a specific variant, then the requirement automatic hazard warning uh, should be the part of the requirement access of this variant. Uh, to control the parametric variability in JAMA, we can also make use of so-called calculations. We can place calculations into requirements text to inject a variant specific, specific value into the text during the generation of variant specific JAMA assets. Um, let's also go to the requirements view of our 150% JAMA project. You can see uh, we have already placed uh, some PV restrictions on them. And you can also see there is a requirement already holding uh, two calculations indicated by this square brackets. So maybe let's firstly have a look at uh, the first uh, calculation. So it means that a pure variance will help you automatically replace the whole calculation, including the square brackets, uh, by the value of the attribute duty cycle belonging to the daytime running light low beam. Now let's have a look at how we can uh, add a new calculation to a requirement. For example, uh, uh, 
let's have a look at the requirement 3.2.3. .3. The value of the LED pulse frequency must be above uh, 50 kilohertz, right? But now I want to, yeah, uh, this value 50 uh, can be also set by an attribute belonging to a certain feature. So how can I do that? I can also select this uh, requirement and navigate to a uh, description and enable editing mode. And then I can uh, yeah, delete this value and then enter two square brackets here and uh, place my uh, pointer in the middle of the two square brackets. Then I can also press Control plus Alt plus P to open this PVSL editor. And I also can use this auto compilation functionality to select the feature I want that is daytime running light LED. And I can further use this uh, small arrow to select uh, an attribute named pause belonging to this feature daytime running light LED. And then click OK. And also, uh, we need to save the changes here. So uh, it means if this uh, requirement uh, if this requirement is part of the a specific variant, then the whole calculation, including the square bar case, will be uh, replaced by the value of attribute pulse belonging to the feature daytime running light LED during the transformation. <clears throat> okay, so uh, based on a feature selection for a variant that is stored in the variant description model, you can generate a variant specific JAMA SS out of your 150% JAMA SS by using a so-called transformation step. Before triggering a transformation, there are several parameters uh, for configuring a transformation. Here, I mainly introduced the three different transformation modes from which you can choose to create a variant specific output on JAMA side. So uh, if a JAMA item is part of a variant, but using tag transformation, the item can be tagged with the name of the variant. And by using copy transformation, a copy of the item can be stored in a dedicated area on the JAMA server. And by using link transformation, a link can be created on a created item within a provided set of items. So in the coming slides, we will see how to trigger the three types of transformations and see the results directly in JAMA. In order to run a tech transformation, we need to set the transformation mode to tech and run the JAMA transformation. Here, I uh, select uh, the baseline EMEA VDM to trigger a tech transformation. Pure variance takes the variant configuration of a specific variant together with the 150% JAMA uh, project as an input then calculates based on this variant, a specific, vari uh, specific drama assets and tags all of those assets with the name of the variant. Then after this transformation, uh, let's uh, switch over to this uh, drama side. Uh, I can firstly uh, do a reload. So you can see uh, there is a newly generated tag named uh, baseline EMA, meaning all the requirements that are relevant to this baseline EMEA have been tagged with the name of this variant. So if I directly click this uh, tag, you will see uh, all the requirements and the test cases that are relevant to this uh, the variant baseline EMEA. So by using tag transformation, you can have a preview of which requirements and test cases are part of the variant specific JAMA assets. In order to run a copy transformation, we uh, we also set uh, the transformation mode to copy. So uh, here uh, I select another uh, baseline, another VDM named uh, baseline Denmark to trigger the copy transformation. During the transformation, pure variance copies the subset of JAMA assets that are needed for this variant to a separate project. So in our example, I mean, uh, in this uh, our 150% JAMA project uh, example, you can see there are 44 items in total. But if I switch over to the 
JAMA project baseline Denmark, you will see this number will be reduced to uh, 25. That means that uh, this baseline Denmark JAMA project has been already tailored. And all the JAMA assets uh, that are relevant to this uh, variance, including the requirements and test cases, has been have been already removed. And moreover, uh, all the calculations that we um, added to the test of the 150 percent requirements, you can see, have already been replaced by the concrete values here. So uh, now let's have a look at uh, how to run a link transformation. Also, we need to set uh, the transformation mode to link as well. Here, uh, you can see I also select uh, the baseline EMEA VDM to trigger a link transformation. During the transformation, pure variance also takes the variant configuration of this variant and also 150% JAMA assets as an input and creates links in the target JAMA project. Now let's uh, switch over to the uh, target JAMA project, baseline uh, EMEA. You can get an item of type variance holding all the newly generated links. So uh, now uh, let's click this one. If you uh, now let's have a look at what kind of links between this uh, variant item and uh, the requirements and test cases that are relevant to this uh, variant baseline EMEA. Uh, we can now firstly uh, navigate to view and then select impact analysis. Here I want to have a look at uh, yes requirements and test cases, then click apply. So when looking at the impact analysis, you can see that it is linked uh, to those of those of the 150% requirements and your 150% uh, test cases that are relevant for this variant. So uh, that's all I want to share with you about variant management for requirements and test cases in JAMA. But uh, at the end of my part of the presentation, I also want to quickly remind you where you can find all the webcast recordings um, in the past. They are on the YouTube. And if you search for Pure Systems, you will find our YouTube channel with multiple playlists showing our own webcast recordings and also recordings for, from our partners. Thank you for your attention. And now I hand back to Robert. Yeah, so thank you, Yang. Um, we now have some time left for questions. So if you want, you can ask a question uh, by entering it to the chat. You should find access to that on the right-hand side. Um, so let's see, do we have some questions? Oh yeah, here is one question. Um, so can calculations be used in combination with all of the three shown transformation types? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's a good question. So the answer is no. Calculations will only be resolved when running a copy transformation because uh, this is only a transformation tab in which a separate copy of the requirements is generated that can be changed uh, independently from the 150% requirements. By concept, link transformation and tag transformation only support structural variability. Thanks. Okay, so I don't see any other questions and we are reaching the end of the time. So as there are no more other questions, I will close the session now. Thank you again for watching everyone and uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.